Right. So. So. Let's make a hypothesis. What is that again? What is a hypothesis? Jack. A guess? A guess. Was that an echo? Did you hear the echo? Yeah. I need you all to be quiet. Not going to hurt. No one is going to get hurt in the scientific experiment. Does he sound any different? Yeah. A little softer. Doesn't really create an echo though, does it? No. Why? We're gonna let Santa play. So why? Yes, you can talk. So why? Let's do flat for Santa. So. That causes an echo. What am I? And then why does it not echo with Santa? What is the difference between the materials that I'm using? This and Santa. Grayson. So what, what, what does Santa, because he's soft, what does he do to the sound versus that? Cool. Yes, bingo. So. Santa. I don't want you to get hurt in the process. Okay. <laughs> Is there a difference or no? Yeah. Why? Christian. Because the pillow is inside it and it's absorbing the uh, metal, so it doesn't... It's, it's not, not the metal. It's not absorbing the metal. What is it absorbing? When I tap this, what is that, what is that creating? Sound? The zapper? So... What am I creating when I hit the pan or pot both times? Winching. Yes. You can hear the sound waves go away from the pot. What is the pillow doing? Same concept of Santa. Sam. Yes, absorbing the sound waves. Because it's what? Hard or soft? Soft. 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 Cool. So this is a soft material that absorbs the sound waves. The sound waves don't travel out. Unlike echo. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> <laughs> Did my voice echo? 
Yeah. I guess once it reads head is hard because it didn't absorb it as much. My voice still kind of echoes inside the pot. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have in my head? I do, there is not as much of an echo, but there is some absorption. There's a little bit of absorption, not as much as the pillow. I do have soft surfaces on my head. What are they? Hair. Hair. What is this? Skin. Skin. Because under, you have the other mask too. Underneath, my skeleton is very hard. The bones, very, very hard. So if I were a skeleton and I would talk in the pot, you probably have more of an echo, depending on the surface. Not much, this is a, is this a softer surface than this? Yes. It is. Very soft. Really doesn't make a lot of noise, does it? Nope. No. So, echoes occur with soft surfaces or hard surfaces? Owen. Hard? Yes. It's like that picture in your textbook of the Grand Canyon versus the hotel room. The Grand Canyon is made out of what? Pillows or rocks? Are rocks hard or soft? Hard. So if you envision the Grand Canyon made of pillows, uh, millions and millions and millions and millions of pillows, would you get an echo? No, not at all. But because it's made out of rock, which is hard, you get the echo. Oh, I don't know. I don't have it. So that is, friends, is another example of an echo. Soft surfaces versus hard. Let's put, we're going to make soup. Oh, yes, soup. soft things in there and that it's enough to absorb it, right? The whole pillow is not in there. All right, poor Santa. You're fine, Santa. You're so smiling. All right. Let's see. I have now got the volleyball and the tablecloth. Oh, it sounds the same. Does it really? Yeah. There's more of an echo versus... Not a big difference. Let's tell the difference. So, soft surfaces, friends, keep in mind, create an echo. I mean, do not create an echo, absorbs. Absorbs the, the, the sound waves. If you, if you can picture in your mind a candle burning, and the flame is burning, what happens if you put a cup over the top of the candle. Yes. Yes. It'll just go out. Yeah. The candle absorbs the air and the flame goes out. Just like with our sound waves, the soft surfaces absorb the sound waves. Basically, if you can envision that, the sound waves can't go out, so they absorb into the soft surface. So, now, let's talk about our ear. 
Turn to Remember Mrs. Reed said do not stick anything in your ear. Yeah. Yeah. Outer ear, middle ear and inner ear. Did you know that you had that many parts of your ear? Yeah. Yeah, no, yes, yes. Your ear is a very complex part of your body. There's a lot of different, look at that page on 119, the diagram of parts of your ear. Look at all of the different parts of your ear. It's pretty amazing. So this is showing a bell is ringing and that is the little wave. See the sound waves go into your ear. Remember the sound, do the sound waves just go one direct, is it one direction or is it all directions? When, it's, when you hit something, like when I hit that pot, I could hear it, you could hear it, so you're forward. This is Pinka, could you hear it? She's off to my left. So the sound waves travel everywhere or is it just directional? Go one everywhere. way. Everywhere. Everywhere, yes. Please raise your hand. So here's a little trivia question. What is the smallest bone in your body? Hmm? Jonathan. Ear bone? Yep, what is it called? Uh. Actually, one of the bones in your ear is the smallest bone in your body. A little trivia today for stirrup. science. Huh? Stirrup? Yes, the stirrup which is this tiny, tiny little part of your ear right here. And that's a bone? Yes. So looking at the amazing design of the ear should cause you to glorify God as your creator. The ear collects sound waves and send messages to the brain. So when I hit the ladle on the big pot, we could hear the waves going out. I mean, the echoes, it just basically is the waves. So that is traveling, those waves travel in our ear. And it gets to go all the way. See, here's the musical notes going out. This, the ear collects sound waves and sends messages to the brain. So these little musical notes are going to the brain. So this allows us to hear. The sound waves travel through three main parts of the ear. What are the three main parts of the ear? What is one part? Jeff. Eardrum? No. And Sheen. Outer ear is one. Boy. Middle ear is another. Grayson. Inner ear. Inner ear. So where do you think the outer ear is? Ella, yeah, you can see it. Outer ear. So when somebody comes up and grabs you by the ear, it's your outer ear. <laughs> so our inner ear, or our middle ear, is basically right in this area right here. And then the um, outer ear is what is traveling mainly to the brain. So it's pretty remarkable. You can see on that diagram the sound waves going into the ear and out into the brain. So there are a lot of different parts of our ear. Who knew? So let's see. Ah, here we go. Health and safety. Sticking things in your ears can be unsafe. Some people like to stick cotton swabs in their ears to clean them. But if not done very carefully, it can easily run the swab too far down the ear canal. Then the swab may make a hole in the eardrum. Ouch. This would be painful. You do not need to stick things in your ear. <laughs> no, you do not need to stick anything in your ear. 
The lining of the ear canal makes wax. The wax picks up dead skin and other unwanted materials. Ooh, yikes. Generally, the wax makes moves to the ear flap. Washing the outer ear with a washcloth usually keeps the ear clean. If the ear canal becomes clogged, a doctor should clean it out, not you. Don't stick any objects in your ear to try to clean your ear out. We all have earwax. Who knows what earwax is? It's a very odd thing. When your body makes it, it's just a, I don't know why, but please don't stick items in your ear to clean it out. Or just have, help, have your parents help you if you feel like you have something, wax or something. But yeah, don't stick anything in your, in your ears. So this is what I am going to do. Since we have, a, we have math and science, I am going to let you work on your homework which is just one page and there's nothing on the other side. So you can work on that right now. We have five minutes about before we are, well, more than that because we have nothing. So this, listen, please. I'm waiting for everyone to be quiet and have your eyes up here on me. Boy, this is what we're going to do. We are going to do your, you can work on your homework for a period of time. You can work on science and if you get your science done, I'll let you work on some math. You have your spelling and vocabulary test tomorrow. You have your Bible verse tomorrow. Raise your hand if you have your Bible verse memorized. All right. Some of you do, most of you do, some of you don't, so you need to work on that tonight, correct? Because that is tomorrow morning. You have your spelling and vocabulary test tomorrow. First thing in the morning. Who has that down pat? Which one? All right. Some of you need to work on that. What word are we eliminating from the spelling and vocabulary word? Words, uh, plural. Grayson. Um, and anger. Yeah, it was anger. We are eliminating. So how many words are you going to have in spelling tomorrow? Nine. 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 Ten with the um, vocabulary. So 11 in total, if you get your vocabulary, a definition or sentence correct, that's two points, right? All right, so. I would highly recommend you working on that. I'm going to give you time, so you have time to study for other things tonight as well. Yes, Sam. Are you supposed to be done in here? Yes. So you're going to need 